Ephesians 1, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are in Christ. Then 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. I have through 18, but I only have 16 there. Okay? Now that's through 18. They're short verses. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. The title of the message today, Are You Happy? There's one person back here that's just smiling weird to ear. I'm glad to see her smile again. Glad to be here. I struggle with today's message. There's some things I heard some a minister it was on TV. He asked the question as the church. Failed in his can come to that virus, this pandemic, can whatever it is, pandemic. I'll give it out. Have we as a church failed our communities? Have we as a body of Christ? Fail those around us. I started thinking about this. So I, I thought about this question. Have we failed our communities? And I'm not just talking about Oak Grove itself. But I'm talking about the churches in the tri-state area. The church in the United States. The church of the world. God's church. The church of Jesus Christ. Have we as a church failed the community and then to a greater sense have we failed God? We have to ask ourselves, where do people turn to when they are down and out? When, where do they turn to when they are in need? This gentleman walked in here this morning. If we weren't here this morning, what would have happened? It struck me that he walked in and asked for help. And my message is this topic have we failed our community? Have we failed as a church during this pandemic? I've said many times that people will turn to God when things get rough, when the tough gets going, or the going is tough. When things are going great, people don't necessarily turn to God. They kind of forget that God is actually in their lives or is blessing them. And they kind of live their lives that is pleasing to themselves. But then when something happens, it's always, God, where are you at? Why are you allowing this apple cart to upset? And of course, when God doesn't respond in the way they want, then right away they're angry at God. Why have you forsaken me? I know for myself, this is easy to do 
without even thinking about it. When things are all going great, I think, boy, life is good today. The sun is shining. The sky is a wonderful, pretty blue. The bills are paid. The projects are being done. Thought I wanted to get done. And it's almost time to get my bike out. It's so wonderful to be alive. Ah, just relax and enjoy the day. I'm going to hit my thumb with the nail, with the hammer, pinch my finger on the mower, scrape my knuckles when the, slip, the wrench slips off, and the project goes horribly wrong. What's my first reaction? The concentration is all on what is bad is that it happened. Everything that went wrong. What about the sun? Is it still shining? Is the sky still beautiful blue? The bills are still paid. And it's still almost time to get the bike out. It's so easy to forget about the blessings and only see the bad things that are happening. Why is that? As I think about all the things that are taking place in the world today and the things that have all taken place in the last year, what well, was this virus, the lockdowns, doing everything the government wants us to do because they said so. People have lost loved ones. People's lives have been changed forever. Where have we as Christians been? Was our church open so that people could be welcome to come in, to find souls, to find comfort, to worship God? What is it that you and I have done to help those in spiritual need? For the most part, people turn to God in times when they're down and out. So where did people turn to? There's no churches open. A lot of churches shut down. Their thumbs still shut down. They're meeting virtually. Did we as Christians open our doors to let the troubled souls in? I know for myself, I was cautious about inviting others to come to church. There's a certain amount of fear of being responsible for spreading the virus. Did I personally let God down? The government says, to shut the doors. No church, no worshiping God. And for the most part, the country obeyed. What does the Bible tell us to be doing? In Deuteronomy 10, verses 20 and 21, Revere the Lord your God, Serve him, be loyal to him, and take oaths only in his name. He is the one you should praise. He is your God, the one who has done these great and awesome things for you that you have seen.
as you read the book of Psalms, how often does the word praise show up in it? 152 times. Now that's in the New King James Version. I didn't check any other versions. Psalms 150 reads this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise His unequal greatness. Praise Him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with the lyre and the harp. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. Oops. Many nights aren't supposed to dance. Hallelujah. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the loud clanging cymbals. Let every Thing that breathes, sing praises to the Lord. Everything that breathes, praise the Lord. As I was growing up, and as I like to say in my more mature years, Mom would sing most of the day as she did what was needed to take care of to care for and to clean up after 12 kids. Now there was always, there was one who was always very careful in staying tidy and doing what he could to help out. I won't mention any names. I would just make, whoops, he was making sure that mom didn't have to work too hard. If things were extra hard that day, Guess what she would do? She would sing louder and harder and longer. If things were good that day, she would sing, praise God. And usually if it's real good, she would hum and whistle at the same time. Two different notes. Ten or not ten. Good or bad, mom was always praising God. Our praise to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are in Christ. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. What is praying? Talking to God. Having a conversation with Jesus Christ. If you're always talking to God, to, God, to Jesus Christ, are you thinking about anything else in the world? Of all the bad things that are happening? Probably not. <clears throat> Be thankful in all circumstances. When you hit your thumb with an hammer, are you thankful for that? That's a command. Be thankful in all circumstances. Usually, what's the reaction? Get upset. Maybe say a word or two you shouldn't. Maybe you should say hallelujah. You didn't break your thumb. You must have hit it. Mm. Mm. And what was your reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to say it. He said it all. <laughs> I know that when I start to talk to Jesus about the things <coughs> of my life, It's not long till I start feeling better about things. When I start to hum a song, it's not long, it's not long till I start to think about the good things that Jesus does for me.
One of my favorite songs is How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. The evidence of existence of a God. As I look around at all the wonderful things in this earth that God has made, and I don't know how many stepped outside this morning at 5, 36 o'clock this morning. It was actually noisy. With the peepers, the birds of all kinds. I heard a couple of turkey gobble. Such a beautiful sound. And I had to think that God created this. When God created all these things, was it for His benefit? Or was it for my benefit? My answer is yes. And the people that He made to walk in the around in the garden to be he also made it for his benefit. As I look around the world at the things of nature, I'm reminded just who God really is and how great he really is. Do I take the time to thank him? Do I take the time to praise him? Do I take time to worship Him? In these times of trouble, the lockdowns, the virus, how many of you have turned to God and praised Him for Him being Him? It's been pretty rough for a lot of people in the last year. How many people mm -hmm. turned to Him and praised him. I can bet you there was a lot that didn't. Some weeks ago, a gentleman died. He died of cancer. He got the cancer about, I'm not sure how long ago. When they gave him the diagnosis, you know what his response was? Hallelujah. I'm leaving this old world. How many of you can say that? You know, He is your God. When you believe in Jesus, when you trust and obey, God the Father is giving you every spiritual blessing that is in the heavenly realm. It is God's will for you to always be joyful. It is God's will for you to always be blessed. And it's also God's will for you to be praying at all times. Be prayerful in all circumstances. How do you get there? Think about that question. How do you get there? To receive those blessings. That is God's will to give you. To be joyful in the Lord. As God, God's will is. For you to be. How far in the community have we reached in touching others. With our joy in the Lord. With 
with all the social distancing, everything being closed down, no social gathering. How many people's lives have you touched with the joy of the Lord? Instead of reaching out to others and saying, come and worship with us, our doors are open. We were cautious by asking and inviting others in. Why is it that we don't trust God in taking care of us? Of watching, uh, trusting God and watching over us in our daily lives? the best of our interest. I'm sure I should say maybe to the best of his interest. Or better yet to well be than our well being. Which makes me think of James 1, which says when troubles come our way, what are we to do? Count it all joy. Count it an opportunity for great joy. Now how in the world am I supposed to call it an opportunity of great joy when I smash my thumb with a hammer? But that's what James says. Count it all joy. I don't know if he's necessarily talking about smashing of thumbs. But the troubles of life, the temptations that the world brings in, that we face each day, it's through the coming, overcoming those temptations that we realize that the faith we have in Jesus Christ sustains us. That we can trust in our Heavenly Father to walk with us and help us through. Did you ever stop to consider that God doesn't have to bless us? <clears throat> if you think about that, God does not have to bless us if he doesn't want to. It should make us humble in, in knowing that God's desire is to be with us. His desire is for us to be with him. It's his desire to bless us, to do good things for us. It's not that he has to, he wants to. How does it make you feel when your loved one does something because they want to? Why is it that so many people take his blessings for granted and even get upset when they think their blessings are being withheld? God, why aren't you blessing me? I speak to you. I go to church occasionally. I worship you. I read your word. Why don't you bless me? I want to be blessed this way. And then if he doesn't, get upset. You say, God, what's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm struggling here? We have to keep in mind that he knows what we have need of. He works to the good of those that love him. To his purpose. It's not to my purpose. It's to his purpose. He knows what I need to serve his purpose. So we have to allow him to work in our lives. To show us the right road to get to where he, he needs us.
Have we as a church missed the opportunity for a blessing from God by listening to our government? Now, having said that, Scripture does tell us we are to obey the powers that be because they are ordained by God. But Scripture also says, unless it causes us to sin, we as a body of Christ the family of God are called together to worship as a body. You take parts of that body, you take that body apart, where's the fellowship? Yeah, we can get all kinds of religious programming on TV and sit and watch it. We have a lot of churches live streaming their services so people can sit at home Where's the fellowship? Where's the accountability of walking a life that is pleasing to God in obedience? In Ephesians 1, it says, God loved us so much from the foundation of the earth that He chose us to be adopted into the family of God. He chose to do this through His Son, Jesus. Not because he had to, but because he wanted to. And this gives him great pleasure. When we come to Jesus, ask for forgiveness, and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. When you stop and think about it, about it and look back to the beginning of time, when God created the earth and then made Adam and Eve, God blessed him. With I would think, was, which with I would think would be the best blessing to have. And that would be to be in the garden, which is probably the greatest place in the world. I'm pretty sure it was, not just probably. And then God Himself would walk with you in the cold of the evening. Who could ask for anything more? Wouldn't this be the greatest blessing ever? To walk in a perfect place with God, our Creator, Himself. Do you think you can find joy in this? I can only imagine that Mom is singing to her heart's content. Because she is walking with Jesus Christ in heaven. And that's where we will be headed. That's where I am headed. When I leave this earth, I'm going to be with Him. And I will be walking with Him in that wonderful land. You may be thinking, well, this, this world we live in is no garden of Eden. I'm not blessed to be walking with God in a place like that. Yeah, you're right. This world is no good to be. But that still doesn't change the fact that God's Word says we are to praise Him. Oh Lord my God, when I, in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds the hands have made. God says, you shall not have no other gods before me. He says, keep the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Forsake not the gathering of the saints. How many Sundays has it been that some have not gathered?
How many churches got together for service and did not sing because of the mandate of the government? There's some churches that aren't gathering yet. Or they're gathering outside. And when, even when they're outside, they don't sing. Where's the praise and worship? Music is to be used in worship. What did the Psalms 150 say? Basically it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I know of one church that did shut down because the members all got COVID. And they did lose a few members. But as soon as their quarantine time was up, guess what they did? They went back to service. Started praising and worshiping God for the blessings that they had. Why did they return to it so soon? It was so they could worship and fellowship with one another to God our Creator. They wanted to praise God in helping them through the loss of loved ones. They wanted to count their blessings with one another. In the last year, how many blessings have you counted? Did you take the time to count them? That is a testimony of the faith and trust in our God. <clears throat> Our one and only God. Being part of the family of God. Being a church of God. I believe it's time that we stand up to all the trials, tribulations, and evil in this world. And sing our praises for all the world to hear. Are you down and out? Did you hit your thumb? Did you scrape your knuckles? Praise the Lord! <laughs> Praise Him in all circumstances. It's still time to get the bike out. The sun is still shining. And the sky is a beautiful blue. Habakkuk, chapter 3, 17 and 18, read this. When the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes in the, on the vines, and the olive trees do not produce, and the fields yield no crops, when the sheep disappear from the pen, and there are no cattle in the stalls, Pretty much sounds like a terrible day. What does he say? I will rejoice because of the Lord. I will be joyful because of the God who delivers me. How many recognize that? How many read this? Our daily bread yesterday. I want to read part of it. Anyway, the writer C.S. Lewis first gave his life to Jesus. He initially resisted praising God. In fact, he called it a stumbling block. The struggle was in the suggestion that God himself demanded it. Yet Lewis finally realized it is in the process of being worshipped that God communicates his presence to his people. Then we, in perfect love with God, find joy in Him no more separable than the brightness a mirror receives and the brightness it sheds. The prophet Habakkuk arrived at this conclusion centuries earlier. 
After complaining to God about evils aimed at the people of Judah, Habakkuk came to see that praising him leads to joy. Not what God does, but who God is. Thus, even in a natural, national or world crisis, God is still great. So I'll leave you with that. Praise God for who He is and not for what He has done.